Hi everyone, it's me, Diana, the Doll Fairy. In today's video, we have a collaboration of epic proportions. All of these amazing artists and myself have joined forces to save the world. I mean, to create a lineup of Marvel-themed dolls for you to enjoy. Many people might think that there's no way we can accomplish such an ambitious goal, but not us. Even if there's a small chance, we owe this to everyone who watches our channels to try. We decide to make this collaboration happen, whatever it takes. For my contribution, I decided to make a doll of Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen was created by Jason Latour and Robbie Rodriguez in 2014 first appearing in the Edge of Spider-Verse comic series. She's an alternative universe version of Gwen Stacy, who was Peter Parker's love interest in the original Spider-Man comics. Although in the Spider-Man canon, Gwen was killed by Green Goblin and Peter was unable to save her. In an alternate universe, Gwen was the one who was bitten by the radioactive spider and became a superhero. Now, a Spider-Gwen doll from Disney's Marvel Rising line already exists, and I wanted to differentiate my doll to make her unique. So I decided to make an adorable, cartoon-esque version of Spider-Gwen using a hair Dorable's head and an Ever After High body. I was originally inspired by my friend Aggressive Barbie on Instagram, who created hair Dorable's hybrids of Vanellope and the other racers from Wreck-It Ralph, which I thought were just so adorable. I have a couple of candidates for Gwen. Here I have Rainbow and Harmony. Right away, I noticed that the Hair Adorable's heads are thicker and less squishy than the vinyl of Ever After High heads. Even so, I removed their factory hair, which is a shame because it's so lovely, and I placed them in some very hot water before twisting off their heads. Though it did hurt my hands a bit, I used my usual jewelry pliers to scrape the hair plugs through the inside of the head and pull them out of the neck hole. This was more difficult than Ever After High heads, but not too bad. When both heads are prepped, I decide to use Rain for Gwen, and to keep her original face up intact. It feels weird not to do a whole new face up on a custom doll, but I love the hair Dorable's faces so much, and I just feel like redoing the face would kind of defeat the purpose of making the hybrid in the first place. For the body, I'll be using a Maddie Hatter, so I go ahead and get her ready for customizing too. The skin color match is pretty good, but even if it's not exact, it won't matter much because very little skin will be showing underneath the outfit. I thought the Hair Dorable's heads were larger than Ever After High, but it turns out that they're pretty similar in overall size. This means I should be able to use the Ever After High hood pattern that I made a long time ago, in conjunction with the pattern that I make for the rest of her suit. So let's jump into creating that pattern. I start by wrapping the doll's body in plastic wrap, and then covering that with masking tape. I only have to do this completely for one side of the doll, since I will be creating a symmetrical pattern. I use a pencil to draw where the seams will go, and trace over some of the lines with a pen. Then I cut the shell off of the doll using a combination of an X-Acto knife and scissors. Just a tip, if you use the knife, it will probably scratch the plastic underneath, so be careful. After removing the pieces and cutting along all of the seam lines, I can take these pieces and trace them onto paper, refining them and creating a symmetrical pattern. I cut and label all of my pattern pieces before tracing them onto my fabric.
I'll be using these stretchy white and black fabrics for most of the garment, while this non-stretchy magenta will be used for the lining of the hood and for accents on the sleeves. I pin down the patterns, trace around them, and cut, leaving a generous seam allowance. For the pink parts of the costume, I will need to create the turquoise blue spiderweb pattern. I test out my idea on a scrap piece of fabric by drawing out some guidelines with a chalk pencil. Then I take some acrylic paint and a tiny brush and carefully paint on some lines. It ended up looking pretty good. I create this spider web pattern on the inside panels of the hood, drawing a center of the web at the back of the hood and having the lines radiate outward towards the front of the hood. While those are drying, I start sewing the bodysuit together. I start by sewing up the leg seams, and then the crotch and waist areas. Then I carefully sew the white top pieces to the black jumpsuit bottom in order to create the zigzag pattern on her chest. I also sew the sleeves together and then sew the sleeves onto the bodysuit before sewing up the sides and along the bottom of the sleeves to close it up. Looking pretty good so far. I sew together the hood lining and then the white outer hood pieces before sewing those two pieces together. Then I use my mini iron to smooth out the lining. It turns out I completely forgot to add space in the back for some Velcro, as I often tend to do. So I'm simply going to sew up the back with what I think is called a zigzag stitch. You can let me know if, in the comments if that's not what it's called. A ladder stitch maybe? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I also sew on the hood, and we're just about finished with the costume. We'll get to her shoes later. For now, I'm switching gears to the Riru. I put the doll's head on my space heater to keep it warm and hopefully more flexible and easier to work with. 
But after just a few plugs, I realized that this plan wasn't really working and sitting on the floor made my back hurt. So back to the desk. Instead, I used my tried and true hair dryer method instead to keep the head warm enough to comfortably reroute. I just applied some heat every 20 minutes or so to keep the head flexible. This was still a lot easier than the Goliope Jellington reroute I did for my Eveltal doll. Rain's head is smaller than Goliope's for one thing, but also, although it was difficult to reroute, it was doable. It took a little longer than usual, and you have to watch out not to fry the hair when you're using the hair dryer, but it worked out in the end. I created Gwen Stacy's signature black headband with some flat wire and some black ribbon. This will help keep her hairstyle in place later. I'm going to use thin layers of diluted white acrylic paint to give her white gloves. Now for what's basically my least favorite part of doll customs, hairstyling. Gwen needs to have cute bangs over her forehead and her hair will need to be shorter overall as well. I start trimming quite a ways below where I want the bangs to sit, because it allows me to take it slow and cut away little by little. To flatten the bangs downward, I tried a few methods unsuccessfully, including using my flat iron that I used for my own hair. It was turned off at this point, but still warm. What did end up working was following Denisa Medrano's tutorial for bangs, which involves taping a piece of freezer bag over the doll's hair and applying a combination of heat and cold. After that, I could finish trimming and styling. I used a bit more light turquoise paint to paint over the purple eyeshadow on Rain's eyes. Now for the shoes. I followed the ballet shoes tutorial from Walker Colors, but not 100%. Instead of using paper mache, I covered the legs and feet in tin foil. Then I sculpted a ballet slipper on each foot using Sculpey polymer clay. The foil allowed me to carefully remove both shoes from the doll without ruining their shape, and then I could bake them in the oven according to the instructions. When they were all done, I removed the foil and used an X-Acto knife to smooth out the shape of the shoes a little, especially the sloppy inside part.
Then I picked out some teal ribbon and satin. I used tacky glue to cover the shoes with the satin, bunching up the edges on the bottom of the shoe. This was a lot harder than I thought it would be, because the fabric didn't always immediately stick to the clay just with the glue. I'd have to hold it in place for quite a while. So this was a little complicated. Then I'd cut a hole in the fabric for the foothole, snip the remaining fabric, and glue down the edges on the inside of the shoe. For the soles, I made a pattern with paper, then used lighter teal satin to construct them and glue them neatly. Then I glued the ribbon to the inside part of the shoes. Before putting these on, let's reattach her head. After a bit of struggle, this was the very best I could do. The neck hole was just too small for the neck peg. Both Aggressive Barbie and Scooty Dolls on Instagram gave me some valuable advice on how to make this work. I chopped off the upper part of the neck peg and also shaved down the circular part quite a bit. I also used my knife to widen the opening of the neck hole and little by little, I got it to the point where the two could attach. For her shoes, I used a bit of glue to keep the ribbons in place, which hold the shoes onto her feet quite well. Since a bit of the acrylic paint on the sleeves ended up scratching off during that arduous process of sewing and whatnot, I touched up the lines with a bit more paint before calling her finished. Okay everyone, it's doll magic time. Ready for the transformation rain? Let's go! Oh wow, you've gotten so much taller! My favorite thing about this doll is hands down that pair of ballet slippers. It was the most complicated part of this custom, and they aren't perfect, but I really like how they turned out regardless. Also, I'm a huge fan of ballet slippers in general, and the color turquoise, so I just really, really like them. Figuring out how to sew her bodysuit was kind of fun too, because it was a little complicated and it was an interesting process. I love her cute face, and I might like to do a couple more Hair Dorables hybrids in the future. 
Any ideas for characters that would look really cute with this cartoony treatment? Leave your ideas in the comments below. And although the reroute wasn't my favorite, it is indeed possible to reroute Hair Adorables. Don't forget that we have an all-star lineup of Marvel superhero and villain dolls as part of our collaboration. All of these artists are so amazing and they've done such incredible work. As always, it's an honor to work with them. So make sure you check out all of the videos. Links to each of their channels are below in the description. I hope you all had fun watching. I'll be back again soon for some more doll magic, so be sure to subscribe so you won't miss it. Bye!